black. It is probably the coolest color for your Space Marine army. I can't think of a better way of showing off badassery, right? Black armor, shiny, foreboding. The problem is it's really hard to capture well on a miniature model. After painting a ton, a ton of Death Watch uh, Space Marines, I've stumbled upon a really good solution to do quick and good looking black armor. If you're interested, check it out. Oh, by the way, welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. I'm George. Let's do it. Here are my Space Marines. I'm using um, a Primaris Space Marine model for this project, although uh, it could apply to any Space Marine, I'm pretty sure, and uh, possibly any other figure that is armored that needs to have black armor for whatever reason. Um, and so the, these techniques should apply equally well to both. Um, I've started off with a prime of just normal flat gray uh, and the plan is to use these two paints to do my heavy lifting. So there's going to be a base coat glaze of Necromancer Cloak. This is a dark gray. It's the darkest gray I've got. I uh, use Army Painter, not necessarily because I prefer it, because uh, I don't really have experience with other paints, uh, but it's what I happen to have. It's my darkest gray, rather than mixing my own, because that, you know, it involves a complexity that I'm not comfortable with yet, particularly with batch painting. Um, yeah, uh, so... The dark, the darkest gray I've got, uh, that'll work for me, and if you can get yourself uh, your hands on something that's a dark gray from whatever paint line you prefer, that should work for you. On top of that base coat glaze, I'm going to add dark tone. It is a wash from Army Painter. It is, I understand, is similar to, but not necessarily the same as, something like um, non, non oil. I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that. The point is that you want a wash to darken up the base coat glaze. So you can take your model from a dark gray to it looking black, but doing so with shadows and highlights and midtones, which is exactly what we want to do. That is the thing that is so hard to do on a just a normal base coated black armor is that if you base coat it black, it gets really difficult to add in shadows. Uh, you can do highlights by doing some uh, edge highlighting or whatever, but it, it has a different feel and the areas kind of in the middle that don't have the edge highlight, they end up looking kind of flat and samey all over the place. So using this technique, you get variations on black all over the model to make it more visually interesting. All right, applying the base coat glaze is pretty easy. You're just gonna mix up the paint, um, the, the glaze, I should say. And that's uh, probably the hardest part is to get your paint recipe right. Um, I use, um, I use, uh, let's say, a couple of drops of paint, a couple of drops of uh, full of improver, and just a few drops of water. Um, uh, to get my mix. Now this, it takes some experimenting. If you haven't done it before, uh, it's easy to get, you know, to go a little too thin. It's easy to go a little too thick, and that's nothing that you can't correct. Um, the overall goal here is to get your paint to flow really nicely, but also to have the pigments be a little bit, um, a little bit diffuse. Uh, so you want a little bit of transparency uh, here. Not a ton. Uh, I don't want a lot of the base coat glaze peeking... Th I'm sorry, uh, I don't want a lot of the primer peeking through the base coat glaze. Uh, I want some of it, but not a ton. Uh, and you can modify the transparency of your paint, uh, you know, to 
tweak the impact of it. In other words, uh, sometimes you want your undercoat showing up more uh, than you do other times. And so you can adjust the transparency by adding a little bit more water, um, et cetera, et cetera. The thing that's really important though is adding the flow improver because a flow improver, you know, as you dilute it, as you thin down your paints, they're gonna have a tendency to wanna separate. Uh, or to act maybe hydrophobically so that they look like they repel uh, it repels from the um, from the primer and that's not something that you want so it involves a little bit of trial and error but once you get comfortable with it it gets pretty easy and so once you've got your paints mixed up you slap it on your model um, and you want to take some attention uh, to pick out just those parts of the model that are gonna be that color. So here, I'm going for a black. I want it to look black, but I don't wanna use black paint. Um, so anything that's gonna be black in the end is gonna get this base coat glaze. Anything that's not gonna be black, I mean, you could still, you can still slap it on there and then paint over it, that's fine. I find it a little easier to just be uh, more careful in the beginning um, and avoid those spots that are not gonna end up being black. Now, since these models are uh, Death Watch, uh, I've added uh, the Death Watch uh, pauldron, and I've added a chapter specific pauldron on the other side. This one looks like it's one of those uh, Torrens, which are interesting models. Now, that means that the those two parts, the shoulder pads, I'm not going to paint black. Well, actually, the, the Death Watch I am. They're going to end up being silver, so they're going to get a, an undercoat of black so that I can highlight later, not highlight, uh, dry brush later with some silver. But for sure the Torrens, I think they have a red color and I'd rather not have to go back and um, undo the black undercoat. And painting red over black or even gray can be kind of a challenge. So if you can avoid it, I would. So do this to all your models that you have. And I wouldn't worry about details right now. Um, just kind of be liberal with it. Just avoid anything. You know for a fact you're not going to paint black. For me, that's going to be the gun. The gun and one of the pauldrons, um, those are not going to be black, so I'm not going to apply the base coat glaze to them. I will give them their own base coat glaze later. All right, so here is our Space Marine in his black armor, black quote-unquote armor. Um, and I did want to point out something. So uh, I use a dark gray everywhere for the base coat glaze, except for one spot. You'll notice that that pauldron is way darker than the rest of them. That is actual black. That is actual flat black. And the only time um, you're going to use flat black for this approach, pardon me, while I touch up something I just noticed, as I was saying, the only time you're going to use actual black is when the part you're painting black is not going to be black. In this case, this is not going to be a black pauldron. This is going to be a silver pauldron. Uh, but I need the black as an undercoat for the silver, so um, I'm using the flat black as an undercoat. Uh, because if I use gray, the silver doesn't show up as nicely. So these are some of those little tricks that you learn with a lot of experience, a few mistakes. So I'm sharing them with you in the hopes that you can avoid some of them. As a case in point, I have this Space Marine here. He is not a sergeant. He just happens to have uh, a bolter and a bolt pistol. Uh, and you'll notice here, in that pauldron, he is, he is from the Space Wolves chapter. Why, oh, why does he have a black pauldron? Well, you'll notice that it is really, really black, and that's because that's going to be an undercoat. In this case, not for silver, but for that blue-gray that they use. Um, but I wanted something dark to undercoat that gray-blue, and I think black will do the trick. Um, so, 
those are just some things I wanted to point out. Uh, we are done basing the models, so we're going to go to the next step, and that is to apply the wash, which is where all the real fun begins. Here is where the magic happens. Darktown. This is the elixir of black armor that's going to help our dark gray armor look like black armor. So I use this typically uh, undiluted and I'm just gonna dab it on all the areas that are the dark gray and what's gonna happen is that it's gonna sink into the recesses and collect there and that collection is going to read like black. Um, it's going to run away from the more elevated areas, making it look less black, but still a little darker than the original gray. And the result of that is going to be armor that to the eye, or really more to the brain, looks like black armor but it still has a lot of those variations in color that for the most part can be considered highlights, midtones, and shadows. That's going to give us that visual interest that we really want to um, leverage to make our models not just quick and easy but also to make them look good. Granted, this won't look as good as maybe manually putting in edge highlighting and adding manual shadows, yada, yada, yada. But that's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of skill uh, and confidence and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but also, it takes a ton of time. If you want to get these models onto your tabletop and start blasting your enemies, um, it's going to be a non-starter. The only thing I will caution you about this approach is that you want to get everything um, and only that stuff that belongs to that color. Um, we're going to do similar things with the other base coats, the other base coat glazes, um, but not with this dark tone. We're going to use other tones to do the same thing that we're doing to our black armor. Um, so we want to make sure that our dark tone doesn't get on any of those surfaces. You can always wipe that off, but honestly it's better to just be clean when you can. It saves us a lot of time and trouble. The other thing I do want to caution you about is that you want to make sure that this dark tone only collects, it only pools in those places where you want it to pool. It has the tendency to pull and it'll, you know, as it dries, gravity will pull it downwards. And as luck would have it, downwards is typically where our shadows are supposed to go. But that isn't always the case. And depending on the kind of the viscosity of your wash, it could collect in places and give you unsightly pools. You don't want unsightly. Um, you want, I guess, slightly, slightly, yeah, slightly. Let's call that a word, shall we? So here is our wet Space Marine Sergeant. Already, it looks much darker. It looks much closer to that black ideal that we were looking for. Um, so we're going to let that dry while we hit the other uh, Space Marines in this batch. Make sure they all look kind of similar. But we're almost there. And that's it. Really, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to painting decent looking black armor for Space Marines. Um, that is really quick and easy. So. I just wanted to show you kind of what that final product looks like uh, in terms of just the base coat and glaze. Like this is the this is the heavy lifting. This is 
the primary point of this particular lesson. I haven't done any of the detailing, uh, any of the other stuff. I just wanted to show you how to get the armor looking good. Once this step is done, you can go ahead and add details to your heart's content. But, you know, if you slap on a base to this, you could basically field it and it doesn't look half bad. Obviously, you do want to add a few details to this. Like, you do want to get the pauldron in, you want to get the hair, maybe that Aquila on the chest. Certainly add some details to the guns, um, but if you were pressed for time, you could just field it this way. Again, making sure that it's based and you're good to go. But anything you add to this model above and beyond this, And that's it. Really, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to painting decent looking black armor for Space Marines um, that is really quick and easy. And you're doing all right. You're doing better than many of the paint jobs I've seen at least. Um, and you can use this approach with pretty much anything. So the star of the show here was the black armor, but you'll notice how the weapons here also have some kind of detailing already on them. And I didn't do anything other than do the base coat glaze and then add a red tone wash over that. Same thing here with this pauldron. That's just um, a white pauldron with uh, a little bit of soft tone over it. Now, this isn't the way that you're gonna stay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add some details to this. Uh, do a little bit of dry brushing maybe to, to kind of help me uh, get that icon looking right. Uh, Cause it's supposed to be white and right now it looks really brown. So I'm gonna use some dry brushing to get that to look white while still having some shadows. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The video is all about the black armor and we've got mission accomplished. I will add the details to this model kit. I won't show them uh, to you as I do them because I want to keep the video short and all about just getting the black armor done. Uh, but I will go ahead and fill in the details so you can see the end results of this project so you can kind of see the power of this approach. One thing I will, sh uh, I will point out is that right now the armor is really shiny and that's because I haven't added the... the uh, the flat varnish that I always do on my models. This is particularly important for this type of approach because the last layer uh, on the model is the um, is the the wash and the washes, at least from Armed Painter, they always leave behind this satiny gloss finish, which looks nice, but I really don't want them on our model on my models, and most of you, I think, don't want that on your models. You want kind of a, a flat finish, and so if you spray this down with some flat finish, some flat varnish, then it'll bring that shine way down, and it'll look really good. But I don't do that until the very end, so I'm going to do the detailing on these models, and then I'll show you the end results right now. And here they are. These are my new Space Marine Death Watch Primaris Squad. And so you can kind of see how the armor looks black. We didn't paint it black, but after the wash, it really gave it a nice black look. So it reads like it's black. More importantly, it's not monolithically black. You can see some highlights, you can see some shadows, uh, not just in the black armor, but also on the weapon and the knee pads and stuff like that. Um, there's plenty of variation in the color, so it's not monolithically black, and it lets, I don't know, it lets the model exist. I don't know, it makes it a bit more realistic, a little more battle-worn. Um, and so this is my preferred, my preferred method of painting black models. And uh, I really do recommend this approach if you want to inject a little bit of life into your models, but you don't want to spend a ton of time doing it. And they absolutely have to have the coolest armor color around, which everyone knows is black. Then, then here you go. Here's a good approach to take uh, when attempting to do so. 
So that's really all there is for this video. Um, this is the, I think, the, the easiest, the best approach to, to make the black uh, armor on Space Marines and probably a couple of your other units. Now, I do have one more approach that I want to show you. So this is my preferred method, but th there's a second runner-up that I've, uh, I've been playing around with, and so I'll show that to you in a different video. So you have some options, right? So if you're doing, for example, uh, a kill team, or if you want to field, let's say, a couple of different squads, Squads of Death Watch or even you know Black Templar or even some Chaos Marines. Um, you want them to have the same color across your army, but you don't want them to all look the same. I have just the thing for you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit. And if you did, would you consider adding a little Clicky click to that subscribe button, maybe hit a like, maybe shoot me a comment. What's your preferred method of painting black armor? I would really appreciate it. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace.